Hi everyone, welcome to Moment Z, the show for the millennials. My name is Amanda Dara, and of course, I never do this alone. I have with me Lumi. Hi girl. Hey. <laughs> As you all may know by now, Lisa Macha left us last week to pursue other ventures. We miss her so much already. Like, mm. But anyways, to cushion the effects on us, we have listened to you all and brought on board the one and only, drum roll guys, <laughs> Kemi Adeyemi. <laughs> Welcome, babe. Thanks, girl. Of course, you guys remember Kemi from the search that birthed this show and from being one of the segment's presenters for the past one year. I'm so excited to have you. I know. Yeah, I'm like, excited to be here. You I know? feel like we're just going to have a new vibe. I know, right? Like, I'm so excited <laughs> to actually have chemistry on set, a new set, everything's yeah, going great. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, this is sweet for me because like, when Lisa was leaving, I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, like, who are they going to bring in? Yeah. Is she going to be as cool as us? Yeah, and like, we bond. Kenny, like, <laughs> and like, oh, just, just come on board. Like, just. <laughs> so how do you feel? Excited, mm. um, ready to see where this goes. You know, it's a new experience than being out on the field. Yeah, but anyway, so. guys, we have okay. to go right into the topic of today. So now, in an article written by Dion Price, a Californian author and coach, he said, I never thought in this day and age that I'd have to talk to my youngest son about being called a monkey, being shot by the police, or being called the N-word. Racism is truly showing its ugly face on just about every level in our society. From the retail giants H&M receiving public backlash for depicting a young African-American boy with a sweatshirt reading the coolest monkey in the jungle, to modern day slave trade happening in Libya. It is shocking to find out that in this 21st century, racism is still very prevalent even amongst millennials. So the question becomes, why does racism still exist today? And do we even see it? All right, so I'm so excited about this topic. But before we get into it, guys, we're going to bring a guest into the studio. So stick around. <laughs> Welcome back. Today on the show, we have Tolu Ogumbadejo, a graduate of economics from Babcock University. He's an artist, a rapper, and currently working as a brand manager in Seventh Interactive, an ad agency. And we'll be talking about the beginning of all things racism. Hey guys. Hi, Tony. Hey, hey, what's up? What's good? What's good? What's Babcock good? students, how you doing? <laughs> Bye. Are we still doing <laughs> this this year? <laughs> okay, so basically, on? I think we need to establish a foundation, basically. Yeah. So, what mm -hmm. is racism? What do you think racism is? Uh, um, let's just say it's, uh, I don't really know how to go about it. I'm not really going to be, I'm going to define it in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the outlook of, the traditional white man on the black man, basically. I agree with you, but then I wouldn't say it's between black and white. I would say racism simply is one race feeling they're more superior than the other, regardless of what it is. What color. Mm -hmm. So basically, I feel like slavery isn't the same thing with racism, but I feel like racism was born out of slavery. Yeah. Because yeah. if you think yeah, about it, um, these white people didn't necessarily come to just come to Africa and make us uh, like kind of like played the whole act of racism, they actually were looking for cheap labor because they had yeah. a lot of plantations. It was an economic system to find cheap labor because yeah. initially they were using their own people to work for them, mm -hmm. but they, you know how it is, like everybody wants to do their own thing at the end of the day. So they thought about it. They're this set of people yeah. who don't have, you know, they don't have the oh, mindset, they don't yeah. have the education, the civilization, that, yeah. who come, take them up and use them as labor. So they brought them over to the United States or yeah. wherever, to the US, Europe, and everywhere that racism occurred. And it got to a point where um, they denied them rights. You know, they mm -hmm. denied them everything that a human being should have. Yeah. And then it now started breeding racism. Because now it was now looking like, oh no, don't drink with us, don't eat with us, yeah. don't use the yeah. same bus with us. You can't even marry without permission. So I feel like racism was born out of slavery. Mm. But slavery wasn't necessarily, not necessarily yeah. racism. It was just cheap labor. Yeah, yeah you get yeah. like, I think like over time, they kind of grew with the mentality that they are lesser beings. Like you're, low, yeah. you're below us, you get. And then I think when people like Lincoln came into the picture, started fighting for the abolition of slave trade, yeah. and they finally got through. Even if it was done, like slavery was over, but then racism, wasn't over. It just, mm. That was, so that was like the right, you get out, like that was the right point for it to just come out like, okay, like we don't like them. We hate mm. them, we despise them, you get that kind of thing. Like, okay, they were, like they've always been lower than us. So why are they suddenly 
trying to have equal rights. But yo, they've been yeah. trying to have it for a long time. They just never really had the opportunity to like right. put their mm. thoughts up. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, I kind of totally agree with you guys. So I think uh, we've already has established like what racism is. And I think yeah. now we need to differentiate between racism and the racist card yeah. and how people actually play the racist card. So all that and more when we come. <laughs> You're still watching Moment Z. Joining us now in this very heated conversation is Jermaine Okwe. He's a 19-year-old entrepreneur, online publicist, and also a law student who owns an entertainment company that deals with show promotions, event coverage, and photography. He has covered over 60 events and shows, such as Davido's 30 billion concert, One Night Stand with Adikule Gold, and Olek 4. Wow, you've done a lot of things. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you yeah. ah, guys so polite. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually talking about the origins of racism and you know how everything started off and how you know people started slavery and racism yeah. and effects on young people. But now I want to look at this from another angle because the topic is the racist card. Yeah. Now, do you feel as a black as a What's the word? A black man. Is, it a black bl man. is black actually correct? Person of color, well, black, I, think, no. I think. I don't know if it's it like politically correct, but like as a black person or as an African color. person mm -hmm. or as a Nigerian, <laughs> do you feel like most times people play the racist card to their advantage? Yes, basically. I believe black people in general play the racist card to their advantage. You know, I believe racism is a thing of the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a feeling of oneness to a race. Mm. When you believe you are of this race, for example, when you believe, okay, you're Nigerian and then you know you're not a Ghanaian, it simply means you're better than the Ghanaian just because you know you're Nigerian. Mm. You understand? So I believe that's the problem we've had. Racism, to me, has gone far beyond what it used to be. Now, I believe we put ourselves down because it's a thing of the mind, mm. you know. We see ourselves as lower beings. Not because anyone makes us feel that way. That's mm. not allowed. Nobody can chain anybody now, can they? Nobody can, you know, flog anybody now. It's illegal. But I believe we still have that mentality that, you know, we're once slaves and we're always going to be lower than them. So we use the racist card to advantage every time. Mm. For political use, for social use, for economical use. For example, political use. If um, you're running for an election with a white person, if you don't win, Automatically, you're going to say, "Oh, because you're black." Is it because I'm black? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I just have. I don't believe it should be like that. Yeah. I believe you should see yourself as a person of value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be black. You should be proud. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't let it bring you down. You know, it's in in in. Am I allowed to talk about my field? Yeah. Sure. No, why not? With what I do every day, you have white publicists, people who are white who have different color, but it doesn't put me down, you know why? I believe your color shouldn't should determine who you are, mm. your personality, what you have upstairs. That yeah, but uh, so. I want to ask now, you said you deal with a lot of people. Yeah. You're doing the same thing? Yes, we all okay. do the same thing. So have you ever had people uh, undermine your abilities. skills, or your because abilities, I'm because you're black as opposed to the person that is white? So have they always chosen the white person over you? Okay, she has a point there. <laughs> Once you're black, yeah, people tend to look at you lower, especially when they're people of color. Mm. You but we get that. From? I think the point we're trying to get at is we already know all this. Yeah. You know, everybody talks about it every day. The point is understanding how do we now overcome it? Because we've gotten to a point where we've accepted it so much, it's, we've kind of become insecure. Every small yeah. thing, oh my God, it's because I'm black. How do we then get our minds to understand the source of the problem and actually get out of this headspace and allow ourselves to flourish as black people? Is, I think is the main question that I feel like we're not tackling Okay, it. if I were yeah. to answer that question... Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, no, you, cool, you no, no, cool. okay. If I were to answer that question, I think we have to deal with it the way we have dealt with the gender inequality. Because if you see when people are saying, oh, men are better than women, men yeah. know how to, mm -hmm. men are more efficient than women. And as a woman, we had to prove, or as ladies, as young people, as young girls, we had to prove ourselves that we can actually do this. Yeah. We had to educate ourselves. We had to match up with a guy that's on that level. Now, you were talking about, uh, you know, if you're running for politics and yeah. all of that. You know, it just reminded me when I was serving and then I submitted my CV to some oil company, I can't mention the name, and they had a lot of entries from foreign universities. Yeah. I don't know if they were foreign students, but foreign universities, and they were taking them first. They were considering mm -hmm. them first. Now, looking at it then, I felt the same way. Yeah. Oh, because I'm Nigerian, yeah. because yeah. I studied here. 
But then looking at it from another angle, are we actually as qualified as exactly. they are? Exactly. Like, let me take it back to what Jermaine said. It's all about the mindset. Like back to that. Like it's 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 like an like she said. It's an it's it's an established fact and all that. But yeah. then at the same time, it's the way they're thinking about. It. It's what they've over time. It's what they've grown to know. What they've grown to perceive. Okay, like okay, he's a white man or she's a foreign student. She's coming from abroad. It's a different environment. Okay, we're trying to get bigger contracts and this yeah. and that. You get, it, like, they I feel just like we're think going in place. circles here because this then brings back to the question that I asked is how do we then correct that mindset again amongst young people? <laughs> Welcome back, guys. You're still watching Moment Z and we're still talking about racism. And we've been beating around the bush just a little bit, but then I think it's time for us to really hone in on the issue. And as young people, what are we doing? How are we changing the way we view ourselves? How are we fixing this? How are we making sure that this thing stops as soon as possible? Okay. So basically, like I said when I started, we just need to see ourselves as people of value. Mm. You know, we don't need to you know discriminate ourselves because nobody is actually discriminating us. Mm. To be very honest, yes, we know there's still racism. We know it exists, but. Once you can see yourself as a person of value, you move past that. Yeah. yeah I, so just I can't, yeah. value yourself more, yeah. lift yourself more. Don't look down on yourself. You don't need nobody's doing anything to you. Nobody, yeah. nobody's stopping you from achieving any goal. Yeah, yeah that's right. Color doesn't determine your yeah. future. Doesn't determine who you be or what you can do. Aside from that, yeah, I just feel like to really come out of that mindset, to really come out of that victim status, I think mm -hmm. we really need to just look at people who have. Done the, who have actually yeah. fought racism, who have actually uh, conquered racism. racism. So I'm talking about the likes of uh, Martin Luther King. Rosa Parks. Yeah, Rosa Parks. Uh, Nelson yeah. Mandela. Yeah, just p I think you should just pick a role model and study mm. them and just see how it was done. <laughs> All right, guys, so it's time for us to wrap up the show in a nutshell. And we're pretty much going to say what we all thought about the show kind of thing. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so what do you guys think? Uh, let me start. What do you think? <laughs> well, in a nutshell, yeah, I just basically, um, the whole racist card thing, I think in as much as we're trying to show that we're now a people yeah. that have come out of a very bad history, yeah. we shouldn't now use it to hurt other people. people. Do you understand? I feel like in as much as you're trying to be the victim so much, yeah. know that don't subject people to where you're coming from. Yeah. Do you get? So that's basically what I would just say about this whole racist card. But yeah. Okay. For me, in a nutshell, I would say that um, assess every situation carefully. So if you think someone is being racist towards you before you just because that's like your first yeah. your first mm -hmm. reaction. So before you react, think about it carefully. Okay, is this person actually being a racist or yeah. do I have an issue with myself? And before you also play the racist card, think about it too. Mm. So okay, maybe they don't want to give me this job. Am I yeah. as qualified? Yeah. Is it a race thing? Yeah. And just be careful about how you like portray yourself. Yeah, I think we, I wish we had more time to talk about it, but I think for me it's more of a thing of us being conscious enough and emotionally intelligent enough to understand how our actions today are influencing tomorrow yeah. and realizing that if we're wiser about the way we react to the way we're treated today they might not there, there's a better chance of us getting out of it tomorrow as opposed to us continue to push it into their minds that we're less than them by projecting certain insecurities but yeah i think it was, yeah. it was a good topic yeah it was a good topic, topic. And of topic. i hope we have another time to even delve further into yeah. it but the thing is the conversation doesn't even end here i yeah. mean you guys can pick up the conversation i mean you have the racism you have racist card you can even uh talk about uh social uh appropriation like there's just a lot to this topic and we really want to hear what you have to say on our youtube page on our instagram page just tell us what you guys have to think about this whole issue and that's it for today guys <laughs> <laughs> so until next time guys don't forget that everyone, everyone deserves, deserves a moment, moment so go, go get, get yours, yours. Oh,